All right, guys, let's see how we can improve our performance when using containers, this time replacing Docker with Podman. So Podman released uh, Podman Desktop, which allows us to manage containers and pods, even uh, connected uh, with uh, Kubernetes very intuitively. In the beginning, of course, you need to have Podman installed on your system. So first you need to install WSL and Hyper-V because Podman needs it for its virtualization. And uh, when ready, you can grab it directly from its GitHub page. So as you can see, you have here the setup and you just run it and uh, that's what you need. So this is for Podman. And then for Podman desktop, you need one of those uh, ways, for example, via Winget, you can just run this in a PowerShell and it will install the Podman desktop. Then you have the following interface started. Basically, it will make certain checks and uh, it's good to have your Podman extension enabled and installed. If you have any troubles, uh, you can uh, click on this light bulb and actually see if there are any errors. Okay, now what we can do with it. If we go to containers we see that we don't have containers but we can create a container let's say that we will use container file or docker file i'll choose a certain file here this docker file .txt. it will create an image directly from it now to the contents of this file as you can see we just uh, are loading nginx alpine version and uh, nothing else those are just commands let's see what we'll do a podman with it I'll click on build and of course this will fetch nginx image and uh, I will create a container out of it. Okay, so we have the image created and I'll click on done. Here is the original one and here is the custom image. And then of course I can inspect uh, what's inside of this image, which commands have been executed. Now we would like to start this container. Uh, so I'll click on this play button here. So I would like to run the image. Here, as you can see from the configuration, we can configure which ports we would like to be accessed afterwards. Um, but the most interesting part right now is certain thing that's inside of our host with certain thing that's running inside of the container. So I'll map certain directory here. Let's say this HTML directory and inside of the container, I'll write the following path. So it will be user share nginx html. And let's uh, start the container. Yeah, it's running on and listening on port 9000. Uh, here I can go to the terminal and it will start a shell inside of this container. Actually, if we go to this directory, cd user share nginx and then html now uh, we see that we have one file which is index html inside we have certain content what's interesting is that this file is actually residing on my local machine this means that i can develop here save and this will automatically will be reflected inside of the container as you can see we have already changed the contents of this file and uh, if you would like to see the result we we'll just need to open up our browser to localhost port 9000 and we see the web server is responding uh, properly. Here is the Kubernetes generated uh, file that you can easily actually run on uh, Kubernetes distribution. So now from this container, if we select it, we can click on this icon, which is create pod with one selected items. Yeah, if I click on this, it will create this pod and like this, uh, you can manage multiple containers inside of one pod or multiple pods. The interface is quite uh, powerful. You can restart pods, etc., etc., allowing you to create uh, multiple containers for different, let's say, database storage containers or uh, front-end and back-end uh, engines. And uh, you can, uh, of course, manage them from Podman desktop, enjoying the improved performance over Docker. All right, so this was just an introduction um, to the interface. You can play around with it and uh, probably improve your 
performance instead of constantly typing uh, the commands in a terminal. So that's it for now. Enjoy and please don't forget to subscribe to the channel.